following podcast is brought to you by Syncfusion, developing components and controls for over 10 years, delivering innovation with ease. Only a few months have passed since Syncfusion first launched the Succinctly series of ebooks, and in that time, developers have found the series to be a great introduction to the often overlooked fundamentals underneath today's most important technologies. One recent addition to the Succinctly series is HTTP Succinctly by Scott Allen. Scott has joined me today to talk about the Hypertext Transfer Protocol and his new book. Scott, thanks for your time. If you would, just start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I'm Scott Allen, and I wrote the book HTTP Succinctly. I got started in development when I was pretty young. My parents brought home a Texas Instruments 994A, which originally I just played games on, but then eventually I learned that you could program this thing using BASIC and Assembler, and I did all of that stuff for a while. I've really enjoyed computers all my life. I had that Texas Instruments computer. I had an Atari computer. And since then, it's been pretty much all software development. I've been working professionally since 1992, doing everything from embedded firmware to web applications to Windows and desktop applications and mobile applications. When did you first start to work closely with HTTP? That's an interesting question because I first started working on web applications in 1998. But I can't say at that time that I really paid much attention to what HTTP was or how this was really working. And it wasn't until 2008 then I had built a lot of applications, I had built web services, and I started letting HTTP sort of sink into me. It's not that I really went out and explored it, but it was just around the time that I wrote this book, actually, when I took a step back and said, I really need to go through the specifications for HTTP, learn everything that it's capable of, and see what it can do. And a lot of that occurred because you began to build more applications for the web. Yeah, a couple of things that happened. It was interesting over the last couple of years because we started to see more uh, open source frameworks and open source web servers that tried to provide more capability centered around HTTP than the technologies that I was primarily working with. And in talking to some of the people that built those frameworks, people like Sebastian Lambla or Serial Seb on Twitter, one of the things he said to me was, I became really passionate about building a framework around HTTP called Open Rasta, partly because I had read through the HTTP specifications, I found out what HTTP was actually capable of, and the existing frameworks and technologies that were out there weren't giving me all the capabilities that I wanted, that I knew were possible and that were out there. Why is it important for developers to understand HTTP? I think a lot of web developers are like me in that we use this all the time and we sort of understand what HTTP messages are and we sort of understand how cookies work. But I had never taken the opportunity to step back and just look at the protocol itself without any frameworks or specific platforms or web servers around just to see how it was designed, how it's supposed to work, what the capabilities are. And once I did that, I found out that that was actually very valuable information to have. It changed my perspective on a lot of things that I build now and the way I think about building a web application, just knowing what the capabilities are underneath of all this. So some frameworks allow you to get closer to the protocol than others. WCF, uh, Windows Communication Foundation, the framework from Microsoft is one example of a framework that lets you build web services but tries to completely abstract away the fact that HTTP might even be remotely involved. So they want you to be able to use any sort of transport to move messages around. But then there's other frameworks, notably uh, Microsoft's recent web API release, that work a little bit closer with HTTP and actually expose HTTP capabilities to you through the programming interface. And I think once you have a good understanding of what HTTP is, what it's capable of, what its limitations are, then you can use even the, the frameworks that try to abstract that all away from you. You can use them a little more effectively because you know what other software is involved and what hardware might be in place on the network that can influence how your application is behaving. And it makes it easier to think about how to design a web application or a web service that also also makes it easier to troubleshoot things when something goes wrong. Tell us about the structure of the book. The way I structured the book was I tried to make the most approachable topics appear first in the book. So things that everyone would be familiar with, even someone that hasn't done any software development as yet. So the topic of resources is in the first chapter of the book. 
What's a resource? What is a resource locator? What is a URL? How do you find things on the internet? That's, I think, one of the core principles of HTTP. It's one of the easiest to understand because everyone uses resources when they type an address into the browser window. And I just tried to demystify what happens when you type something in the browser address bar, what happens behind the scenes, how content and resources get retrieved and displayed in the browser. And then from there, I went into HTTP messages and from there into how connections work behind the scenes. So at every step through the book, things became a little more under the covers until at the very end, uh, the last chapter of the book deals with state and security, which I think are also very important topics. Most people who haven't worked with HTTP closely think that the web appears very stateful. And one of the things I present throughout the rest of the first part of the book is the fact that HTTP in the web is very stateless in its nature. What I introduced in that chapter was how cookies work and how cookies can appear in an HTTP message header, how, how that's all part of the specification, and how cookies don't necessarily have to be about tracking your identity or finding out who you are, but that's one way that we can apply that particular piece of technology when we're building a web application, use cookies so that we can you can log in once and then we know that you're logged in and we can track you as you put things in your shopping cart. What are the fundamental messages of the book? Web applications are really just relying on a lot of the capabilities of HTTP being plain text messages that are very visible to uh, web servers and browsers and also all the little network devices in between. But I guess even more fundamental would be the chapter on HTTP messages, just talking about request methods and uh, response messages and response status codes. You, you have to know the difference between a get and a post message if you're a web developer, because if you confuse the two, you can actually build an application that behaves badly and does the wrong thing. I, I really tried to keep the book focused on just the important topics that web developers should know about. Again, I've been speaking with Scott Allen. Scott's new book is HTTP Succinctly. Scott, thanks for joining me. Sure, thank you for having me. Download a free version of Scott's book by simply visiting the Syncfusion technology portal at syncfusion.com.